Welcome to the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School Lesson for Sunday, January 28th. We have a good lesson today. Uh, it's uh, from the book of Daniel. Uh, we are still in Unit 2. Unit 2, which is entitled, A Living Faith. A Living Faith. Our text is taken from Daniel chapter 10, verses 10 to 19, verses 10 to 19. Our devotional reading was Revelation chapter 1, verses 1 to 18. Background scripture, Daniel chapters 9, I'm sorry, chapters 10 and 11. From the Adult Quarterly, the title of our lesson is Strength When You Need It Most strength when you need it most. And the lesson aims from the quarterly are number one, explore the story of Daniel's visit by an angel. Number two, sense Daniel's state of mind during the angelic visit. And number three, thank God that God's people always receive from God exactly what they need to know at the time, no more, no less. And we're going to talk about Daniel's encounter, Daniel's visions, uh, and how Daniel was wearied by the revelation, the abundant revelation that God gave him through dreams and visions. Um, before we do that, I also like to use the standard commentary uh, in my lesson study and from the standard the lesson title is a strong faith a strong faith and additional aims from the standard or summarize Daniel's encounter with heavenly with the heavenly messenger number two explain the difference that faith in the Lord makes when facing an uncertain future faith in the Lord what the, what difference faith in the Lord makes when we face uncertain futures and we don't always realize it but all of our futures from our perspective are uncertain not from God's but they're all uncertain from our perspective and then number three quote one or more scripture passages that provide a personal sense of God's presence and assurance during times when the future looks uncertain. Uh, the from the standard, the lesson has three major divisions. The first is attention securing faith. Attention securing faith, and that's covered between verses ten and twelve. The second is assertive faith. It's covered between verses thirteen and fifteen. And the third is awakened, strengthening faith. That's covered between verses 16 and 19. Now, in studying today's lesson, I, as I do usually, I, uh, I pray certainly before for understanding, for God's under, for to give a meek understanding of His Word. And I asked myself three questions. Uh, what does it say? What does it mean? And what does it mean to me? Or what does it mean to us today? What does it mean to, to Christians today? Uh, and you might ask yourself, you know, what does this narrative from Daniel, it's, it's not doctrine, it is narrative and about extraordinary experiences that were unique to him. I mean, being visited by angels uh, and being given abundant revelations through dreams and visions of future events and, and some uh, that were not to be fulfilled for for centuries. Uh, so, so what can we take away from this that we can apply to our lives today? Uh, as I've said many times, uh, uh, all scripture was not written for us. We need to know how to rightly, I'm sorry, to us rather. We need to know how to rightly divide the word of God. But it was written for us. Even that that was not written directly to us 
was written for our example and for our learning. So there's something we can take away from all Scripture. And I think before we get uh, into our verse-by-verse discussion, I think a couple of the things that we can take away from uh, today's lesson are, uh, number one, we, we can take away an understanding of the cost of this revelation to Daniel. Daniel, uh, we see in our lesson today how he was greatly distressed and greatly troubled and weakened by the abundant revelation where uh, our text is taken from is, is after Daniel has already begun receiving abundant revelation. That started in the early part of chapter 7. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about that, uh, and the less the the messenger today that is sent some three weeks prior to his arrival, when Daniel first started to afflict himself and to fast or to deny himself himself his normal uh, meals and so forth, um, we see that he is coming with yet more revelation, as if to say. Uh, there's even more, you know, uh, on top of everything that Daniel had already received. Uh, and and God had a purpose for revealing what he did to Daniel. But it was at cost to Daniel. We want to understand that. We also want to understand that even though Daniel was wearied uh, by the revelation and the troubling things that were revealed to him, uh, he was strengthened. He was strengthened uh, by a messenger of God, of course, acting on God's command. And he trusted God for the future, as we need to do. We want to take away from this, no matter how distressing our futures may seem, how bleak things may seem in our future, we want to know that God holds the future, and we can certainly trust him uh, through the future. I'm going to read through our lesson text um, in just a moment here. Uh, Hopefully you read the uh, first nine verses of chapter 10. Uh, They basically uh, talk about uh, uh, something being revealed to Daniel in the third year of the reign of Cyrus the king, the king of Persia. Uh, and and we we know that Darius and uh, when our last week's lesson began in the first year of Darius the, the king of Babylon of the Chaldeans and he was subordinate to Cyrus we need to understand that and it talks about how Daniel was mourning uh, as a result uh, of what was revealed to him which he had some understanding of uh, he uh, he. Uh, restricted his diet, he drank no wine, uh, and uh, and then there appeared to him a man in uh, bright linen, and his loins was girt about with a fine gold belt, and uh, he obviously was an angel, and it's believed that this was the angel Gabriel reappearing to him. And there were men with him that did not see this angel or see the vision, but uh, Daniel uh, saw him and he said, the uh, angel or messenger said to him that from the time he began to seek an understanding of what had been revealed to him and to afflict himself or to mourn, um, God had sent him, God had dispatched him. And actually, and, 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 and when he talked about, or as he spoke rather, Daniel became weak and actually fell to the ground with his face on the ground. And our lesson picks up uh, after verse 9 at verse 10. Verse 9 reads, uh, and I'm going to read uh, from the from the New King James Version. It just, uh, just reads a little uh, clear here. It says, yet, verse 9 says, yet I heard the sound of of his words, and while I heard the sound of his words, I was in a deep sleep on my face, with my face to the ground. So, the words actually—it's—it it appears that the words actually put him into a deep sleep. So our lesson text begins at verse 
10. And again, I'm reading from the New King James Version. Suddenly a hand touched me, which made me tremble on my knees and on the palms of my hands. And he said to me, O Daniel, man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak to you, and stand upright, for I have now been sent to you. While he was speaking this word to me, I, I stood trembling. Then he said to me, Do not fear, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard, and I have come because of your words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me twenty-one days, and behold, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, for I had been left alone there with the king of Persia. Now I have come to make you understand what will happen to your people in the latter days, for the vision refers to many days yet to come. Verse 15. When he had spoken such words to me, I turned my face toward the ground and became speechless, or the King James says, dumb. And suddenly, one having the likeness of the sons of men touched my lips. Then I opened my mouth and spoke, saying to him who stood before me, My Lord, because of the vision, my sorrows have overwhelmed me, and I have retained no strength. For how can this servant of my Lord talk with you, my Lord? As for me, no strength remains in me now, nor is there any breath left in me. Verse 18. Then again, the one having the likeness of a man touched me and strengthened me. Verse 19. And he said, O man, greatly beloved, fear not. Peace be to you. Be strong, yes, be strong. So when he spoke to me, I was strengthened and said, Let my Lord speak, for you have strengthened me. Amen, amen. Now, we're going to uh, uh, just get into our lesson to, uh, verse, verse by verse here. Uh, and I may go back and forth between the King James and the New King James Version, so bear with me. So verse uh, 10 then reads, And behold, a hand touched me, which set me upon my knees and upon the palms of my hand. Now remember, uh, Gabriel had appeared to Daniel just prior to this, so we believe this messenger is, Dan is Gabriel, a reappearance of Gabriel. He had already appeared to uh, to Daniel back in chapter seven and eight, and uh, he uh, touches him after he is prostrate on the ground, uh, basically in a sound sleep, and he arouses him enough to get up to his hands and his and his knees. He's on his hands and his knees, and and then verse eleven says, and he said unto me, O Daniel, man greatly beloved. And he has been referred to in that manner as a man greatly beloved before. Uh, he is, uh, uh, he, he, in verse, uh, verses 21 to 23 of chapter 9, he was referred to as greatly beloved. And he says, understand the words that I speak unto thee. And that and stand upright, he says, stand upright, uh, so that he's trying to get his full attention here. Uh, he's trying to awaken him and get his full attention. He wants his full attention to what he is about to say. Uh, he says, "For I have now been sent to you." While he was speaking this word. To me, I stood up trembling. So you can imagine. Now, Daniel is an older man. He's in his perhaps mid-80s. Uh, he's been in Babylon for 70 years. And uh, actually, a little over uh, the, uh, the pronouncement uh, to by Cyrus or the command 
by Cyrus uh, for the children of Israel to return to Judah uh, and, and, and Jerusalem in particular uh, to rebuild the temple as uh, happens approximately some three years prior in the first year of his reign. This is the third year of, of Cyrus's reign. So Daniel is an elderly man and he is uh, he gets to his knees and he's trembling it not necessarily out of fear maybe just out of feebleness so he stood trembling uh, now this is verse verse 12 says then he said to me do not fear Daniel for from the first day that you set your heart to understand and no and to humble yourself uh, the King James says to chasten yourself. That word translated chasten is better translated humble. It means to humble, humble yourself. It says before your God, your words were heard and I have come because of your words. So God heard Daniel's words. The first day he began to humble himself, to afflict himself, to deny himself, uh, and to seek understanding. Now, what, what does that say to us about uh, the petitions that we make of God and how uh, we go about that? Uh, I think I've said before, uh, I, I don't fast enough. I don't focus enough on the spiritual and deny the flesh, which really uh, helps us to focus on the spiritual. Uh, and and uh, and Daniel is a good example of how to focus ourselves entirely on our petitions. Uh, and he did so by humbling himself in the manner that he did. And I think we should do that as well. Now, so that, and, and it appears that God obviously respected that, respected him denying himself uh, some things that, uh, again, uh, obviously he didn't have to, but to focus his attention fully on God and certainly to demonstrate the earnestness of his petition or his desire, in this case, to understand the visions. So verse, uh, let's move on to verse 13. Verse 13 says, But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days. The King James says 20 and 1 days, but 21 days. And behold, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me. Now, um, the, uh, well, let me, let me just finish the verse. For I had been left alone there with the king of Persia. Uh, and, and, and the reason for uh, reading the, uh, from the New King James Version is uh, to help us understand verses like verse 13. It gets a little confusing there. It reads, But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty days, but, lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, and I remain it. I remain there with the king of Persia. Well, he had been left there with the king of Persia, but Michael came and uh, relieved him. Actually, uh, enabled him to continue his mission by uh, by overcoming the prince that was there obstructing him. Now, who can obstruct? Uh, an angel, an angelic being, but another spiritual being. Uh, we know that angels have demonstrated uh, demonstrated tremendous power. The one angel that we know of from uh, the Old Testament that overthrew 186,000 in one night uh, was uh, uh, comes to mind, and I forget the chapter and verse. But we know that angels have tremendous power, and the so this prince of Persia was no doubt a demon that was there influencing the affairs in Persia uh, under the 
direction or authority, if you will, of Satan. From Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 to 18, we read about uh, the fact that we don't wrestle against uh, we don't wrestle against the the uh, uh, we wrestle, rather, I should say, against principalities and against powers and against the rulers of darkness. There is a, a hierarchy of a demonic hierarchy under the authority of Satan. Uh, Jesus himself called Satan the prince of this world on more than one occasion. And he is called in Ephesians the prince of the power of the air. So uh, no doubt uh, this prince that uh, withstood Gabriel uh, was was a demonic uh, being. And we see that he was held up for exactly three weeks, three and twenty one days or twenty one uh, three and one day rather twenty one days, which is exactly the time that uh, Daniel had been humbling himself. And Michael, uh, called a chief prince, uh, came and again uh, got rid of that obstruction. Um, and no doubt he was able to overpower uh, this prince that was in Persia, this demonic prince that was in Persia. And we see uh, Michael is one of the few angels named in the Bible. Gabriel and Michael are named in Scripture uh, we read about Michael in several places, Revelation uh, 9, 11. Uh, we read about him again in, uh, in Daniel uh, 10, 21. Uh, we read about him in, again in Daniel 12, 1, where he's a defender and deliverer of God's people during the time of great trouble. Uh, Jude, he's, taught, he's called actually an archangel in Jude 9. Uh, in Revelation 12, uh, 7 to 9, uh, he is uh, really uh, uh, at war in heaven against the dragon, that's Satan, and his angels. And it seems like every, every time Michael is mentioned in the, in the Bible, he's in some great conflict, uh, he's engaged in some great battle. And as he is in this case, uh, he actually goes on to assist God's people, uh, no doubt those who have returned to Jerusalem and or, uh, uh, and or attempting to construct, reconstruct the wall. So from the King James Version, verse 14, Now I am come to make thee understand what shall befall thy people in the latter days, for yet the vision is for many days. Uh, we uh, we see here that um, it it is most like or the the angel again. This is this is Gabriel uh, is is about to explain uh, the vision that he just had, which uh, we're led to believe that Daniel has some understanding of, just enough to be troubled by, but not certainly not uh, a clear understanding. And that understanding is going to be given in the next couple of chapters, chapter 11 specifically. And he is going to be talking about the kingdoms that are, that are to come over uh, the next centuries following uh, uh, Daniel. And he's going to talk about the wars um, between the kingdoms and when he gets into chapter 12 he's talking about the end time he's actually uh, given an understanding of what's going to happen uh, in the end times now let's understand uh, Daniel has already been given uh, uh, dreams had dreams and given revelations that uh, I'm sure have uh, uh, really caused him to to scratch his head, and actually Gabriel has given him some understanding already of the four beasts. We go back to chapter 7, we read about uh, the, uh, the vision of the rams and the goat in chapter 8, and 
and Gabriel interprets these visions for him, and the and the interpretations are distressing. Uh, we talk, we we he talks about actually the uh, the Messiah, the Anointed, that's going to come, and how he's going to be cut off. He talks about the seventy weeks. He's going to be cut off in the sixty ninth week, and these visions uh, have been a, a, a drain on Daniel as they've been given uh, with the interpretations by angels. So we, we recall last week um, Daniel uh, offered a, a prayer of, of confession and, <clears throat> and, and uh, sincere confession for the sins of his people and he, he offered supplication. He wanted uh, God to restore his people, to restore Jerusalem for his name's sake. Uh, and, and, of course, Daniel wanted to know uh, what was going to happen to his people. And it was because of him seeking over the last three weeks to know uh, how his people, uh, what was going to befall them and how, uh, what was going to happen. God gave this revelation, which, again, is unfolded in the next two chapters. But the, t but the things that are unfolded are for many days. These are, this is for a great... Uh, uh, some significant time after Daniel. Verse 15, And when he had spoken such words unto me, he being Gabriel, I set my face toward the ground and became dumb. Now again, uh, Gabriel has basically said, you know, um, there's even more to come than what you've already uh, been shown and what you've already been made to understand and uh, at this point Daniel is just speechless he just falls prostrate on the ground and again he's an older man and he's just speechless uh, it's like again Daniel said wait you know there's one there's, there's more here and so it, it's just the abundance of revelation is overwhelming I recall Paul being called up uh, being given a thorn in the flesh uh, because of the abundance of revelation. Now, that's maybe that's not a good, um, uh, a good example of uh, our comparison. But the point that I was trying to make is that uh, I can imagine uh, God's prophets being overwhelmed at times by the the sheer volume of the revelation. I mean, God uh, being all knowledgeable about things past, present, and future can certainly overwhelm us with awful things, dreadful things that are to come, and then the, the minutest of details. So verse 15 again says he becomes dumb. Verse 16 says, And behold, one like the similitude, I've got to read this uh, from the uh, New International, it says, And suddenly one having the likeness of the sons of men touched my lips. Then I opened my mouth and spoke saying to him who stood before me, My Lord, because of the vision, my sorrows have overwhelmed me, and I have retained no strength. Now because of, again, I believe the visions that he's been getting since chapter 7, uh, he's been overwhelmed. Uh, again, the details, and, and, and Daniel knows that what he has uh, been shown, what God has shown him in visions and dreams, is true. These things are going to happen, and so that's why the, the, uh, that's why they are uh, they are such a burden for for him. And I think maybe at times all of us uh, might think we want to know the future, what's going to happen in the future. But you know, <laughs> when we think again about it, it would be an awesome burden to know what's going to happen. Uh, when certain people are going to die, what cataclysmic events are going to happen worldwide. It would just be an awesome burden to know those things beforehand. And so you can imagine how Daniel feels uh, with this great burden of knowledge. So he tells this angelic being, and uh, again, uh, it may be another angel here uh, that is, is talking to them at this point. That touches his lips, he becomes dumb. The angel actually touches his lips, which enables him to speak. 
it it gives uh, gives him voice, and so he opens his mouth and he tells him exactly what he feels, but he is drained. He has no strength. Let's go on to verse seventeen. And verse 17 reads, For how can, actually, uh, let me read that from the, from the New King James as well. Verse 17, For how can this servant of my Lord talk with you, my Lord? As for me, no strength remains in me now, nor any breath left in me. Now you can imagine this old man being, excuse me, maybe gasping for breath uh, because he's just totally drained and and weak, uh, and and these and the abundant revelation has just wearied him, as I said, and so he's he's saying uh, he's basically telling the angel, uh, really, I, I really can't take anymore. I'm 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 drained. I'm tapped. Uh, and again, uh, as I said at the beginning, what, what are the takeaways for us in this lesson? One of them is, again, to understand the cost of this revelation that God gave to Daniel to give to us, to give to, so that we can have an understanding of the things that were to come. Many of those uh, revelations have been, those prophecies have been fulfilled. The kingdoms that were talked about have been uh, have come, some have gone. We know uh, the Persian kingdom, the Babylonian kingdom, the Persian kingdom, the, 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 the Grecian kingdom, the Roman kingdom, and now we're in the revived Roman era. And so those, those prophecies have been fulfilled. And, and there is one of the greatest assurances of the, the verity or the truth of the Bible is fulfilled prophecy. And so God preserved his word Actually, actually, at great cost, he gave us prophecies, many of which have been fulfilled through this man, Daniel, at great uh, cost to him. Verse 18. Then there came again and touched me one like the appearance of a man, and he strengthened me. That's from the King James Version. Uh, this may be yet another angel or another messenger that is uh, that has come to Daniel. Daniel has just poured out his his heart and says, "Hey, I'm I'm really exhausted. I'm I'm overwhelmed. I, I can hardly breathe." And and one an angel comes and touches him, and of course that uh, that was no doubt. Uh, uh, under the instruction of, of God, and he strengthens him with the touch. Uh, he strengthens Daniel, and we see what happens in the next verse, in our final verse, uh, and that is, and he said, that is the angel, and said, O man, greatly beloved, fear not, peace be unto thee, be strong, yea, be strong, and when he had spoken unto me, I was strengthened, and said, Let my Lord speak, for thou hast strengthened me. So a combination of the touch and him telling Daniel to be strong actually revived Daniel. And no doubt again this was uh, this was the work this was the work of God, this was the miraculous, uh, and he actually gave uh, Daniel the strength to hear the understanding of the vision what he was about to hear and if you read through chapter 11 and, and, and on the 12 it's a lot okay uh, it's a lot to take in and so uh, but Daniel was strengthened by the Lord through this angel to uh, to be attentive and to hear and understand, to be alert. We have to uh, believe that uh, with this strengthening came an alertness and a receptivity uh, so that he understood uh, what was being revealed to him uh, 
about the understanding of the vision. Now, again, and that was our key verse, by the way, uh, verse 19. Uh, what do we take away that, uh, that can apply to our lives today? Again, I believe we need to understand the great cost uh, of this revelation uh, to Daniel. But then also, we need, Daniel was troubled uh, until, uh, uh, in the strengthening, I believe, his, his faith was, was strengthened as well. Uh, God, um, Daniel realized, as we should, that the future is in God's hands. And yes, I mean, it may, there, there's certainly some foreboding uh, aspects of it. And that's why I don't care to know it. I mean, I, I know a lot of people are into Ancestry.com and so forth and 23andMe, and I, I guess I don't have a problem learning about my ancestry. But when you get into the, the medical aspects, well, I, I know people, I, I'm not going to, let me not go there. Uh, I, certainly, I, I want to take uh, precautions. I get regular physicals and, and, and anything that uh, 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 can be avoided in terms of a, a sickness or an illness. I certainly want to avoid that. But I don't necessarily want to know how I'm genetically wired or predisposed to, to some kind of disease that I have no control over. I, I, and, 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 and I don't really care to know things about the future that I don't have any control over. So uh, we, we, I want to trust, to be able to trust God completely for today and for whatever comes tomorrow and the next day and the next day. So I think a takeaway for, for us in this lesson is no matter how uh, foreboding or how uh, upsetting uh, some aspects of the future might be. We may know of some things that are coming. Uh, we can trust God with everything, with our future, with our present. In fact, we've trusted him with our eternity, uh, with our, our, our future eternity. We can certainly trust him with this temporal eternity. So uh, I hope you got something out of the lesson. Again, uh, it was a narrative. There was no doctrine here. The things that occurred in uh, in the in the, the in the book of Daniel were things that were unique to him. Uh, again, angels don't appear to to, to many of us <laughs> or most of us, uh, and so uh, and he was certainly blessed uh, with an abundance of revelations through dreams and visions that none of us will ever be. Uh, so we learn from uh, this. Again, what I hope God, I hope we've learned what God intended for us to learn from this passage of Daniel. So God bless you, and we hope to, uh, hope to see you all in church on Sunday morning and at Sunday school.